a lot of bravado for a fact I was gonna sit down and tell dick stories, but... <laughs> Why not, right? Might be my only ones, so we might as well go big. How about it for zero fucks, everybody? My friends, <laughs> Devo, Adam, and Adair. Wow, we did it, Webster Hall, huh? No shit. My very bizarre fan base is here. <laughs> Purple hair, this fucking DJ, and... An Asian guy with long hair and a beard, you better know karate. <laughs> hot black chick next to a hot, I'm guessing some sort of Middle Eastern something. <laughs> Three snowboarders, an awkward black guy, and loners. That pretty much sums it up. You show me a fat Asian, we got this thing covered. <laughs> One of these girls, your chick? That's your girl right there? Nice. Married? No. Not yet, but you already know you're going to. Wow, that's serious as hell. <laughs> what, how long have you been together? Six years. Six years? How old are you? 27. 27? Don't get married to the chick you found when you were 21. <laughs> There's no chance of working out, dude. There's no way. Were you just crushing puss at 15 or something? <laughs> Good for you. You didn't do it, dude. Good for you. Kids, the whole thing you want, right? Don't do that. <laughs> I did that 13 years ago. It is quite a price. <laughs> for some sweet, sweet pussy, dude. <laughs> that is quite a price. What kind of kids you want? Boys, girls, you don't give a shit as long as they're healthy, right? Yeah. Lies. <laughs> You want a boy so bad. I only have a girl and I want a boy. I don't even want any more kids. I just wish she was a boy. <laughs> I tell her that every day. Not with words, with actions. I peg her in the chest with a football. When she's rolling around on the ground, I'm like, if you were a dude, you'd have caught that. <laughs> I'm gonna step over like Iverson in the finals. <laughs> Get up. You just got faced. <laughs> I have a daughter, it's cool, I guess, to some degree. She plays sports, but she plays soccer. Yeah, really, woo? 13-year-old <laughs> girl soccer, dude? Do you know how boring 13-year-old girl soccer is? The same exact boring as adult men's professional soccer. <laughs> Extraordinarily. Three hours for zero-zero scores. But you gotta support. I show up for the last five minutes of the game and I run up and I'm like, all right, I'm here, don't be a whore. <laughs> you don't have to blow everybody, I'm here, I love you, I'm not, you shouldn't feel abandoned, uh, you know. <laughs> you need some money, I'll help you with your homework, just please, don't, don't blow everybody, but God, I can't watch this whole game. <laughs> the, the life, and the world would be an easier place if she was a boy, man. Girls make fathers' lives very difficult with things they don't even know. They don't even realize they're making it difficult. Laundry, can't do laundry anymore with my daughter's stuff in it. It's just uncomfortable. <laughs> Looking how I look in folding little girl underwear does not appear <laughs> as if I'm doing a good deed. It looks like I'm like organizing the trophies from all my victims. <laughs> I remember her. Pigtails, Central Park. <laughs> Sometimes it's the first time I hear it too. Uh, <laughs> I stopped when she was 11, she's 13 now. When she was 11, I stopped doing laundry with her shit in it because the last time I was folding her laundry, I'm folding her underwear, already weird. I start noticing these huge holes in her underwear. 
which sucks because I gotta find out why that is. I'm her father. I can't let that go. I have to ask, and I know the answer's not gonna be good. She's not gonna tell me some awesome answer for why there's holes in her underwear. Like, oh, Dad, I forgot to tell you, I invented sharp farts. Like, yeah. Show me. We can share everything now. Take me into your world. <laughs> that was not the answer, by the way. Sharp farts, I wish. You know why there was huge holes in her underwear? She was 11 at the time. She goes to the bathroom by herself. Guess sometimes she doesn't wipe that great. A little shit stain in her underwear. But instead of throwing the underwear out, she cuts the shit stain out with scissors. Because <laughs> she's embarrassed of a shit stain, but not embarrassed to walk around and crush his panties all day. <laughs> and for weeks in the garbage, I've been seeing little shit covered Hannah Montana faces <laughs> and shitty Tinkerbells. I just thought she was doing voodoo or something, which I was intrigued by. Just a, I don't know what kids are gonna become anymore anyway. We're only making a generation of assholes. They don't wanna be anything important anymore. Kids with the YouTube generation, everybody wants to be famous. My daughter's lazy, all kids are lazy now. They just wanna be famous quick. My daughter doesn't wanna be a doctor or a lawyer. She wants to be Rihanna. And granted, she could take a punch, but <laughs> talent that does not make. No, don't applaud her, it's my good jaw genetics. <laughs> We're a scrappy jawline family. <laughs> is this your chick? You wish though, right dude? How hot is that chick with your nervous energy? It's never gonna happen. I'd like to foster love, but that just looks uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't know, dude, try to make a move. You know her, right? Yeah. She's your buddy. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. I don't know. How old are you, sweetie? 18. 18. That's you're dumb. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean this guy's your friend? This guy's creepily hanging out, waiting for you to make a 19-year-old dumb decision. You think he's your friend. You believe that in your heart of hearts, that he's your friend. Yes. So if you were like, hey, we should totally fuck, he'd be like, no way, bud. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro skiff? I don't even look at it like that. Home slice? <laughs> he'd say yes. <laughs> yeah, but he's like, that's, is that a friend, honestly? If you would fuck? Then I have no male friends. Yeah, you have no male friends. Exactly right. You said it. <laughs> I have young girls argue that all the time. A lot of guy girl roommates in this city. Not fucking, just living together as friend roommates. That's insanity to me. <laughs> that is asinine. To live with a girl you're not fucking. Fellas, if you do that, and I mean this, harsh sentence here, but hear me out. <laughs> Fellas, if you live with a girl you're not fucking, you have no respect for women. <laughs> you have no respect for them. You don't know what you're capable of. Men, we're garbage. And you gotta know what you're capable of. Listen, when men have our, when our balls are full, this is a hackneyed subject at this point, but it's just the facts of life. When our balls are full, we are a different human being than when our balls are empty. Does that make sense at all? So the girl you live with has to be a girl you're fucking or else you're gonna, weird stuff's gonna happen. When our balls get full, we're not the same person as when they're empty. When our balls are empty, that's when we're the person that our parents made. When my balls are empty is when I'm doing everything good in life. I pay my bills, I shoot hoops, I say hi to friends, I high five a lot of people. When your balls are full, that's why guys like jerk off so much. You just gotta like change that state of mind and get back into the world functioning empty balled again. And when our balls are full, we'll do fucked up shit and to live with a girl who's just your friend, like you're gonna fuck that friendship up. I know you will, I would. If I had a girl roommate who I wasn't fucking, two seconds, I'd ruin that. First time she's like, 
hey, I'm going to my parents' house for the weekend. 20 minutes after she leaves, I'm gonna go smell all of her panties. Then, <laughs> then I'm gonna rub her vibrators on my face while I jerk off with a fist wrapped in her dirty underwear. <laughs> yeah. It's horrible. And don't even waste your time judging me on that. For a few reasons. One, I've never done that. I'm just telling you that's what I would do. And two, there's no reason to judge it because I would judge myself. Do you get it? That's the whole full balls, empty balls thing. The juxtaposition, right? As soon as I was done jerking off in her room, I'd be like, oh my God, what the fuck have I just done? <laughs> this is my friend's end table. What am I doing? <laughs> my buddy. She trusted me and I ruined it. And I would clean up meticulous and I would try to stack the dildos back the way I found them. I'm like, oh my God, I should have took a picture. <laughs> I would turn off the light switch with a tissue and I would step out into my own footprints and I would be appalled at myself, judging myself for you. I'm like, how can you do that to your friend? She trusted you around her stuff and she's gone. And you ruined it, man. You spoiled the sanctity of your friendship. Well, you know what? She's gone the rest of the weekend. No big deal. I cleaned up. It's over. Never again. Lesson learned. And 30 minutes later, I'll be right back in that room rubbing dildos on my face. <laughs> Just shaking my head in the mirror like, do I know me or do I know me? <laughs> and I'll clean up meticulous after that time and I'll leave the room again. And every time I'll leave that room believing that I'm never going back in that room again. I'll believe it when I say it, but I'll be jerking off in that room every half hour on the half hour <laughs> until moments before she comes home. It'll be a race for the clock. When our balls win, we are not to be trusted. We're not your friends. Friendship doesn't have that kind of sexual tension. Real friendship does not have that. My best friend's name is Dave. <laughs> if Dave called me at 2 a.m. and was like, dude, let me come by and suck your dick, I'd be like, I'm gonna have to say no, Dave. <laughs> because we're friends. <laughs> that friendship's real, man. That friendship means something to me. That's real. I know it's real. Because if me and Dave weren't friends, I'd be like, yeah, dude, come over here. I'm a liberal dude. He's a good enough looking guy with soft lips. I bet he sucks a mean dick. <laughs> but then what happens? What happens then? Dave's sucking my dick. He probably gets a boner. I can't let my boy go home with a boner. <laughs> now I have to suck his dick. Now we're sucking each other's dicks and we're not even gay. We're not gay. We're not gay, man. We're not gonna do that for long before we're like, dude, what are we doing, man? <laughs> Puh, what are we doing here? <laughs> Let's stop wasting time and start plowing some ass. So I, I'm gonna have to let him fuck me first because I'm the fat chick in this story. So I'm gonna have to lay back with my ankles in the air, knees akimbo while Dave takes these long rhythmic pounds into my shitter. Sweetie, these long rhythmic pounds into my shitter. I thought I lost you for a second. But I'm bigger than Dave, so eventually I'm gonna wanna dominate him. I'm gonna flip Dave over. I'm gonna start tagging him in his knuckly ass and then pull out, shoot a couple ropes of friendship across his butt cheeks and then <laughs> collapse my tit sweat covered chest across his spiny and rib cagey back. <laughs> I know, sounds like a great night. <laughs> sounds fantastic. But I can't cross that line because we're friends, <laughs> real friends, right? I gotta think about tomorrow when I wanna hang out and play video games with my friend Dave, but I can't even look him in the eye because I'm still picking his butt hairs out of my pee hole. <laughs> Not worth it. Hey, look, you don't have to laugh at that. I'm happy you even sat through it, honestly. <laughs> that is a really tough one to get through. Yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys not walking out on that one. That is tough to hear, front to back. You know who really hates hearing that joke? My friend Dave. 
It's his least favorite of all my jokes. Like, Man, that is very vivid. I'm like, right? It just came to me too, dude. I didn't even write it down or nothing. My favorite Asian guy, how you hanging in there? Good to go? You wanna hook up with this 18 year old chick? This guy ain't doing shit in the middle. <laughs> what? She's too young, how old are you? 34, is that too old for you? Yeah. Yeah? All right, her dad's still alive, big deal. <laughs> oh, what kind of girls you like, dude? Annie. You have no choice whatsoever, really. Asian girls? Never got an Asian girl. Yeah. How about, like, black chicks? Never, just all white girls. No shit. Good for you, man. How many white girls in the year have banged an Asian, dude? Isn't that crazy? One. Just one back there. And why, because he wrote a term paper for you or something? <laughs> Did he teach you some dark arts afterwards or something? What was it? You just did, you, two? At the same time? Yeah. You're trying to get one normal length of dick inside of you, right? <laughs> yes, just laugh at it. Fucking oh. I hate when crowds get whimpery during comedy. You should never get like that. Never do anything but just laugh. If it ain't funny, don't laugh. But if it's funny, laugh. But all that like, ah, ha, ha, ooh. Such a waste of time. Letting words affect you at all like that is a waste of time. I've had so many situations where people would just laugh and get over themselves. It would be such a better time. And also, I give you this as a lesson for life. If you want to take lessons from a guy who wears a wallet chain still. <laughs> take my advice, please. If you can learn to not let words affect you in a way that makes you like cringe up and ooh and ah, it is so liberating in life. You will never lose an argument, ever. Because if you have no fear of what's coming your way, you can say whatever you want to people. Horrible, terrible things. <laughs> and words do hurt most people. And it's fun to watch them just crumple into a ball as you're saying viciously crazy things. I do this for a living, you know. So this is something where a lot of mean stuff gets thrown my way, you gotta learn how to like, just Teflon. You can't hurt me with words, that's for sure. I had a thing with a guy a few uh, years back, not even, maybe about a year ago, here in New York. He was talking during the whole show at a comedy club. They were gonna kick him out. He was there with his wife and his daughter. His daughter was an adult. And they were gonna kick him out for talking. I go, no, I like to talk to the crowd. Let me see if I can save this guy. Maybe he's an all right dude, just a little drunk. Maybe he's an all right guy, let's try to save him. Now, I was wrong, he was a piece of shit. But that's hindsight. At the time, I'm like, let me see if I can save him. And uh, I said to the guy, I go, uh, hey, buddy, what's going on? Who are you here with? And he goes, with this attitude, too, he goes, my wife and my daughter. I go, cool, man. Well, how old's your daughter? And he goes, none of your fucking business. And I was like, all right, man. I didn't ask you if I could butt fuck her on your table. I just asked you how old she was. And the girl was like, I'm 26. I'm like, okay, she's 26. Like, what's the big, why are we fighting, dude? You're at a comedy club. We're just trying to have fun, right? What's the big thing? And uh, I go, I'm trying to relate to you, man. I also have a daughter. How about that? And he replies, he goes, yeah, I know I met your daughter, like implying something. And I was like, where? On To Catch a Predator? She's 13. <laughs> And then I was like, oh wait, you know what, dude? She actually told me all about you. She said she could fit her whole 13-year-old fist around your pencil dick. <laughs> yeah, and then just like you queefs, that crowd was like, whoa! How can you say that about your daughter, man? How can you say that about your daughter? And here's how I can say that about my daughter. And listen up, this is a good one. It's because I fucking made it up. It never happened. <laughs> Turns out my daughter never jerked that guy off. 
Don't even worry about it. If she did jerk him off, I probably wouldn't bring it up at a comedy club to the very guy she jerked off. I'd probably handle that in some sort of a legal form. She's my daughter and I love her, that's the whole thing. It's the middle of a comedy show, like, you're going to jail, mister. Sorry, everyone, I'll be right. You son of a bitch. My apologies to the man who fucked my daughter. Gotta have a tough skin for shit like that, man. World's too tough if words are taking you down. You're not ready for the world. I have people yell out. People don't know me, they yell out all kinds of things. I had a guy yell out one time from an audience. This is like a 1950s insult. He goes, uh, your mom sucks dick down by the docks. <laughs> that should've been followed by a C. Your mom sucks dick by the docks, eh? I'm like, well, tell her to change locations. It's not really. We're bringing our boys back home from the war? Like, fucking, go by the docks. You're trying to blow merchant marines? Like, hit the city, man. We're gonna have some foot traffic. I grew up with a stepfather. Anybody else here? Oh, sorry you all came from fantastic homes. We're all tennis prodigies or something here. You gotta step up. Boyfriends of mom, that's even worse. What were some of their names? I bet they're great. Uh, there was this guy named Big Mike. Big Mike? <laughs> you had a call on that? <laughs> hey, it's me, Big Mike. I'll be eating Chinese food in your mom's room. <laughs> if you wonder what that smell is, it's Peking duck and fuck. I brought you Nintendo game, instead of our hair. <laughs> Stepdad's a good dude. Still is, Joe. Great guy. Huge dick, true story. <laughs> big. Real big. Was Big Mike's dick big? You never saw it? You never got a glance? <sighs> Boy, I did. I saw Joe's dick. The room's uncomfortable, I'm not sure why. I don't... <laughs> if I brought it up in a comedy situation, it's probably a funny story. I'm not here to break down to you. <laughs> in the middle of the show, it took a dark turn. He just started having these memories. Like, oh my God, I was just a boy. <laughs> I saw Joe's dick, it was no big deal. It's situa I bet when I tell you how it happened, a lot of you are gonna feel weird for being weird about that. Like, you'll be like, oh, that makes sense. That happens, things like this happen. Um, I was 10 years old, my mom was at work, and Joe was holding me down and making me look at his dick. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, scream for God, and I tried. But God couldn't hear me, because Joe's balls were in my mouth, and you try pronouncing a G with balls in your mouth, it's damn near impossible, if not just impossible. I'm making that up. That never happened. I did uh, see Joe's dick, but it wasn't under those horrible circumstances. I saw it by accident. I grew up in an apartment, so close quarters, man. Shit happens. And I remember one day I was in the hallway of our apartment. We had a mirror on one side, bathroom door on the other. Joe was coming out of the shower. Bathroom door was open. He turned around. I looked up at the wrong time. Bang, shut off the mirror. Wasn't even a dead-on shot. <laughs> And he turned around, man, and I saw his dick, and wow. It was huge. I mean, it was... Came in and out of the frame when he turned around, like... It, it blanked at his face for a second. It hit his thigh. It was like a rocky punch, like water shattered off his legs, slow-mo. playing ball in a cup. <laughs> it was a big dick. 
And when any kid sees his stepfather's dick is that big, I thought what any kid would think. I wish this guy was my real dad, honestly. <laughs> I could use some of that hog in my bloodline. Man, oof. My dad has a little dick, and that's what he gave to me. Passed it right down. <laughs> it's very sentimental about it. Little dick. I know, I saw my dad's dick, too, when I was younger, which... That's not as weird, right? Most kids see their father's dick. It's how you learn how to take a shower when you're a kid, right? Jump in with your dad, he shows you what's up. And then at some point, that gets weird, and you get out, and you do it yourself. <laughs> that's what I did. I don't remember how old I was when I stopped taking showers with my father. It may have been too old in hindsight. <laughs> it may have been too old. I was definitely too tall, I know that. <laughs> I don't remember all those showers, but I remember that last one. That was, uh... <laughs> His dick hit me right in the face. I know, it seemed like I was gonna be suggestive, but I just said it. Cock slept by my father. <laughs> Not on purpose. We were in the shower. I don't remember how old I was, but I just remember he was like, son, hand me the shampoo. And I was like, yes, Papa. <laughs> and I turned around and his dick went boom, right in the face. And I was like, dude. <laughs> and if you're old enough to call your dad dude, you probably should be in the shower with him. Dude. <laughs> And he was like, what? I'm like, what? Your dick just hit me right in the beard, man. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, Christ. I... I'm gonna be thinking about this all day at work. <laughs> hey, Dad, I think I'm gonna stay at my place for a few nights. <laughs> How old was he? It's a fake story, too. My apologies, everyone. I hate lying to you. I'll tell you the true story about how I saw my dad's dick. And it was little, I'm not lying about that. But I saw it, here's how little it was. The situation when I saw my dad's dick was so chaotic. I shouldn't even notice that his dick was out. That's how little it was, it drew my attention. I was a little kid, I was at his house for the weekend and I'm up at like two in the morning, probably eating snacks, watching TV. And somebody started trying to violently break into the house, like kicking in the front door violently. And I was a little nervous fat kid and I go running for his door like, Daddy, help! Dad, help! There's something terrible happening! And to his credit, he wanted to answer my cries. He opens the door butt naked. And he just goes, what is it? And even in all my fear, I was like, Dad, so much... Oh, what? <laughs> No way, dude. Come on. Really? <laughs> Chip off the old block, asshole. And I was like, you know what, Dad? Go find a hiding spot. I'm like, never mind. I'm gonna call Joe, get some big dick advice on how to handle this. It seems like a big dick job. Can't send my dad out there to fight that guy in the nude with that little dick. I love my dad. What if that guy kills my dad? That's our family's legacy, front page of the paper. Local little dick man dies in tragic home invasion. And there's his fat son covering his dad's dick with one hand, crying and yelling at everyone. Stop laughing at him! Stop laughing! He's my daddy! <laughs> he was a good man! Very insecure. I used to ask women in the audience as like a unit, like used to, a whole group of women, I'd be like, hey, what's the smallest dick you've ever seen in your life? And I stopped doing that quick. <laughs> because I was looking for answers that would make me feel better about my dick size. Thing, you know, they'd be like three inches or four inches, and I'd be like, oh, well, I'm doing okay then. That's not what happened. I found out from that question, from that polling system, how horrible women are. You're really terrible, terrible people. It's unbelievable. If you ask enough women in one group, small stick you've ever seen, you know what the answer most of them give? A lot of them give the same one. It's not even a measurement of numbers or anything. They just hold up a pinky finger. Hmm. <laughs> pinky dick, pinky dick. Pinky, that's a lie, number one. There's no man in the world with a pinky dick. A pinky dick? 
If you have a pinky dick and you turn 18, you kill yourself. That's respectable. <laughs> you jump off a bridge or something more hilariously small dick related, but you do not press forward in life with a pinky dick. You girls are laughing. Was that your answer? Was that what you said, pinky dick? You saw that in life. No shit? Guy pulled it out for you. What's your name? Christine? Guy pulled out a pinky dick for you. Is that how it happened? Sexual situation, guy whips it out. Christine, if you mind. What did you do? You told him you had to go home. Yeah. I don't know why you're applauding her. That's the shittiest thing ever. This guy pulled out a pinky dick and she told him she had to go home. How fucking horrible is that? Are you kidding me? You just left. Christine, you're a rotten person. But can I say you're not alone? Any girl who tells me she saw a pinky dick, my next question is always, well, what did you do? What'd you do when the guy pulled it out? And most of the time, they always leave. They walk out. Some girls are nicer than others. I don't know how you handled it. Like some girls, you know, the guy pulls it out and they're like, oh shit, I just remembered. My sister's on fire. I should have left like an hour ago. I was having so much fun. But I gotta jam. And then some girls are just mean, like, oh, shit, pinky dick, and then start trying to, like, periscope or something. Do you think if a guy's got a pinky dick, and this is real, right? And a guy's got a pinky dick, do you think he's unaware of the fact that he has a pinky dick? He knows. It haunts him every day of his goddamn life. Every morning, he wakes up, and he stares at it angry, and he grabs it with two fingers, and he stretches it as far as it can go until it's so thin, it looks like a goddamn Capri Sun straw. <laughs> and he lets it go, hoping it's gonna stay where he pulled it to, and it just snaps back all angry. So... And if he pulled that shit out for you, that was a big thing for him. All day long, he was talking himself into it, like, okay, all right, here we go. Tonight's the big night. I like this girl, she likes me. She's different. She's not gonna walk away like all the rest. This is a good girl, cool chick. I'm gonna pull out my pinky dick tonight. <laughs> and she's gonna go down there and she's gonna suck it with the mouth of a whistler. <laughs> but they never do. You know how much of a shot that was? How much of a shot that was to that guy's psyche? You didn't care at all, did you? You know why that is? Do you know why you're callous like that, Christine? Because it's a pain you will never feel. That's it. Women walk away from sexual situations like that, laughing, giggling, high-fiving with their girlfriends. Because <laughs> you've never had the flip side of that. No guy has ever walked away, ever, from a sexual situation. We don't do it. We come to do a job and we finish at all costs. <laughs> and the problem with that is it has made you women believe that, like, you're perfect. And why would a guy ever walk away? Well, let me tell you something. There's plenty of reasons to walk away. We just don't do it because we're better people than you. There's a million and one reasons. We should walk away, but we don't. We come to do a job and we finish at all costs. Sometimes there's a price. Do you know how many vaginas I've had my face in front of that smell like boiled hot dog water? Tons. Tons. Like Chinatown dumpsters on Clams Casino Night. Countless. That means more than I can count. Do you know what I did to every one of those vaginas? I ate them. Because my face made a promise when I went down there. You don't walk away from that. You finish the job. You come and you finish. Yeah. Look, don't cheer me on too much. I mean, you know. I make little comments during it for myself. Like, I'll pop up and I'll be like, did you jog here? And then I'll go back down. I'm like, did you shit while handstanding today? <laughs> I got 80 of those. Were you the front half of a two-person horse costume this afternoon? 
Did you and your best friend fart into each other's assholes? <laughs> I have a question for you, Christine. Why don't you try anal with this guy? If you thought you wouldn't feel it in your puss, why didn't you give it a shot in your butt? Grow up. <laughs>You can't have your nanny eating pumpkin pie on a couch you know you butt-fucked on. <laughs> and she doesn't know, but you know, and that's enough to make it weird. Like, oh, Nana, she's just eating away, has no idea. It's the, the ghost of butt-fuck past dragging around. <laughs> you butt-fuck in hotels. Because what's the big concern with butt-fucking? Messy cleanup. It's not your problem in a hotel. That's a Mexican lady's problem in the morning. <laughs> Don't feel bad, that's what you're paying for, man. You're on your way to brunch. You're like, my bad, Guadalupe. There's an extra 20 on the end table there for you. <laughs> She's confused. She's like, por qué? Oh, no! <laughs> Mi Dios! Esta poop! You can laugh at that joke, you can not laugh at that joke, but you have to admit, that was all legit Spanish. <laughs> That's the poop. It's poop. <laughs> Trying to think of things for little dicks. I try to reach out to other little dick guys and give ideas for things. That's why I'm so intimidated by black women. There's beautiful black women here. Yeah, fucking, I'm very intimidated by black women. We have a lot of black women here? Way in the back, and then one up here. Fantastic. This is your boyfriend? White dude. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> hey, whatever, you need a co-signer for a car loan. Big whoop. <laughs> Got yourself a Kia Sportage now, you fucking? Good for you, dude. You gotta be confident for that. Black women intimidate the shit out of me sexually. I'm so attracted to them, but I can't make a move. I get very nervous. I don't even jerk off to black girls in porn, which isn't racial, by the way. I love black dudes in porn. They're my favorite. <laughs> Five black dudes banging a chubby white chick while her husband jerks off and cries in a corner. <laughs> That's my shit. My keyword search that whole phrase every day. <laughs> there is a staggering amount of updates. I don't even do the whole thing. I just put in five black and it fills in guys. It's a weird thing to clap for, but all right. The black women. You know what it is? Black women got those big old booties, which I like. That's my thing. Yeah, you're an ass man, right? I love it. I love looking at it. And then when I see it, I'm like, I want that. And then I put it into like an actual sexual context and I get very insecure. <laughs> Just nerd, you know what I mean? You get it, right? The guy's like, you understand what I'm saying? Like a big, and then you, I see that big butt. As a white dude, I don't know if I have enough dick to get through all that cheek to hit the holes. <laughs> and I feel like with a black woman, I'm gonna end up like titty fucking her butt cheeks for a half hour. And <laughs> that's not gonna make her have a good time. That's gonna make her make a hilarious black woman phone call. Like, girl. This white boy just titty fucked my butt cheeks. <laughs> leg a lamb, leg a lamb. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why boy just titty fucked my butt cheeks. Oh, well, well. Can I say something to you guys real quick? This is, uh, with the exception, it sounds like Rocky speech, with the exception, of the day my daughter was born 13 years ago, 
This is hands down the most amazing night of my entire fucking life. I dance, you guys. And I love you so much for sharing it with me. And it wouldn't have happened without you guys. So I fucking love you so much. Thank you. I love you. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, DJ Luke.